Can you smell that, brother? Yeah, that's right. We've got the Razor Boon Slang Wire Gaming Mouse. Top of the line. Cream of the crop. Oh, yeah. Or at least it was the top of the line back in 1999. But gaming mice have changed a lot over the last couple of decades. So I think the question on everyone's mind is, can this candy ass RGB lightweight take on the intercontinental champion of gaming mice? Now let me step into this sponsor segue. Ridge Wallet. Ridge Wallet has redefined the traditional wallet with its compact frame and RFID blocking plates. Keep your wallet bulged down and use our offer code Linus to save 10% and get free worldwide shipping. Representing modern gaming mice, we've got my daily driver, the G Pro Wireless. It features 25,000 DPI sensitivity, one millisecond polling, and it weighs in at just 80 grams. Let's see how I do in AIM Labs. Wait, there are people who do 200 of these in a minute? Oh yeah. This sensitivity is definitely not right for me. It's a little bit high and I'm just, I'm, I'm ending up just past everything and I'm trying to compensate and then I'm ending up not going far enough. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, well, <clears throat> score of 82, accuracy 63%, not bad, not bad. Whew. Uh, is the Logitech gaming software installed on here? Oh, uh, maybe 500 and that doesn't feel quite right. I don't know. Maybe I'm just making all this up and I just suck. <laughs> if I don't break 100, I will be Trey's embarrassed. 96. Oh, not nice. 71% accuracy though. All right, fine. That's, that's as good a gamer as I'm ever going to be. I'm number 52,000 in the world. Yeah. Now the question is, how does something from 1999 stack up? Our Razor Boomslang is still packed away in its original tin and we got our hands on the collector's edition. So this is one of just 5,000 units. And this is pretty special for me because back when this was the king, I don't think my whole gaming rig was worth $100. And gamer specific hardware was a relatively new concept. And so was Razor's edgy green marketing. Diabolical synergy. Tom scroll wheel, 45 DPR, more than twice as precise as a standard mouse. Ambidextrous ergo design levels the playing field for right and left-handed gamers. Patented dust barrier, seven foot cord. Wow, that's a long cord. Bag lunch, unprecedented strike speed, venomous accuracy. A revolutionary step in the evolution of game controllers. That's right, evolution. Revolution, it's both. And you know what, compared to its competitors, the Boomslang had a lot more going for it than just marketing. It's rated at a whopping 2000 DPI, which was massive back then, especially for a ball mouse. Oh no. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, I love this gray cable. Can I just say gray, we want you back? That is so classy. Even now it feels like alien technology. We've got number 1,671 and this is interesting. Powered by Karna Precision, patent pending. Karna actually ceased operations due to financial issues in 2000. But in 2005, Razor was revived by former Karna employees, Robert Krakow and Min Lang Tan. That's a familiar name. Little fun fact for you. Want another one? The backpack and screwdriver are finally almost ready at lttstore.com. Get signed up and be notified when they go live. So for those of you who don't know, the way that this sensor works is this little ball down here actually rolls around as you move the mouse, transferring that movement to inside rollers here at the back of the mouse and here on its left. As these well, also roll, they break a thin light beam. So the more the beam breaks, the more the mouse has been moved. Some of you might actually remember needing to clean your balls about once a month growing up. But I bet you forgot that you also had to clean out your rollers because if either of them got caked up with dust or in my household with so many ladies living there, hair, you'd get terrible tracking resulting in a very frustrating gaming experience. My mom had hair down to probably the small of her back when I was growing up. So there would be hairs wrapped around these rollers that were like, I pulled them out of the most like Ugh. this. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, sorry, <laughs> that story aside, what else have we got in here? <laughs> Nestled in the mouse foam is a USB to PS2 adapter. Probably pretty handy 23 years ago. And then below the foam, whew, we've got a first edition certificate of ownership. Uh, we've got our quick setup guide. Install driver, shut down, plug in and reboot. That's right, friends. It was the year 2000 after all. <laughs> We've got uh, the latest and greatest on technique and technicalia. What? This is not your mother's mouse. We know you're chomping at the bit to put this baby through the paces. You've loaded the drivers, tweaked your system settings, plugged in your new razor. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. To get the ultimate experience in movement and control, we highly recommend the 3M Precision Mousing Surface. 3M used to make first party mouse pads? I did not know that. We've also got the master guide. Genre defining weapons that make for penetrating explosive gameplay. Excuse me? Penetrating explosive gameplay. You heard me. <laughs> Prepare to get penetrated, David. Explosively. Finally, our handy dandy installation CD. This was pretty crucial back then when downloading software could take ages and cost you money. Not so much anymore though. Get subscribed or you might miss our 100% legal way to emulate games video. Back to our mouse. The construction here is a mix of a black rubberized material that actually for all its years still feels really good and really grippy. And this semi-transparent green plastic that hasn't aged quite as well in terms of its aesthetics. You can see some of the internals though and probably the coolest thing about them is that it looks like you could probably repair this mouse by hand. Like the solder points are so big. Uh, it's got what appear to be PTFE feet and on a modern mouse pad like our Northern Lights LTT store, it slides around just fine. Can you hear the, can you hear the wheel? Yeah, that doesn't sound good. That does not sound that great. Our right click is a little mushy, but still functional. And our left click sounds like it should. One of the most interesting thing about the primary buttons is how long they are. This was actually an ergonomic feature because it allowed you to rest your hand and click away no matter what your grip type was. Oh, wow, those are, that's where the side buttons are. Huh. Wow, that's a stiff scroll wheel. It feels like it's kind of designed for ring finger right click and pinky and thumb. Well, it's ambidextrous, right? So, interesting. I would say that when it comes to ergonomics, your mileage may, no, will vary on this one. That's a very, it's a very claw grip. You kind of can't spoon it because it just, it doesn't support you on the sides. And I guess the reason for the width is it's not really designed for middle and index finger because that would put your wrist at like this unnatural angle. Okay, I'm gonna try and use it as intended. Okay. We ready? Yeah. Did the computer just restart? Did it just freaking crash my computer? Wow. I mean, in fairness, the instructions did say, <laughs> install driver, shut down, plug in, reboot. RTFM, fair enough. Touche, Razor. I can feel the aches in here and here already. I haven't even done my small flicks aim test yet. <laughs> Whoa, oh wow, that wasn't good. Oh my gosh. Okay, I swear to you, I'm not hamming this up. This is really hard. I feel my whole, I feel my whole forearm like tensing up here. Okay, now I'm feeling, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. Watch me not actually be any worse. Oh no, this is worse. <laughs> I can't look at the score right now because I'm aiming. Okay, come on. Oh, that's a lot worse. <laughs> It didn't feel that much worse. Like my intensity was high. Oh wow, I did get more accurate over time. Okay, one more time, one more time. That was a warm up. I'm going for it. I'm beating the G Pro wireless. There we go, there we go. Get my rhythm, get my rhythm here. Yeah, yeah, rhythm, rhythm. Feel the rhythm, feel the rhyme. Get on up, it's bobsled time. Cool runnings. 61, 60% accuracy. Okay, that's still not, not as good as the, G Pro Wireless. The truth is that dragging around a heavy mass, and it has to be heavy because otherwise it won't stay down on the mouse pad, just cannot provide the same experience as a proper modern optical sensor. I mean, yeah, I'm no pro at the best of times, but the ball causes a lot of issues. 
First of all, trying to make small adjustments, well, you're running up against the friction between the ball and the little plastic retainer for it. And second of all, when you try to do bigger flicks or sweeps, it's hard to control the ball fully. So a quick flick shot could overshoot significantly because that ball has momentum. It'll keep rolling for up to half a second. As for the smaller issues, the mouse is overall pretty heavy at 137 grams. The shape, while being advertised as ergonomic and ambidextrous, kind of resembles a, a duck's foot. And for me, it was incredibly uncomfortable. Like my arm is really uncomfortable after using it for just a few moments, but apparently after a week, you end up with Stockholm Syndrome. Ploof, who wrote this video, claims that he kind of likes it now. <laughs> What's cool is that all five of the buttons, the two on the sides and the three on the top, including clicking the scroll wheel, are programmable. That's right. I mean, no gaming mouse would truly be a gaming mouse without software and programmable buttons. And guys, I got to say, while the utility looks like it came straight out of 1999, it does have some pretty interesting features. You can change the input on the X and Y axis independently. You could alter your double click speed, your scroll wheel speed. You've got these cute little test areas. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it totally did. It takes me to their Chinese site now, which is interesting. And shockingly, this program is still on Razer's website with the last release coming in April 2011. We did manage to install it on Windows 10 in spite of the warning about it requiring Windows XP, but our sensitivity adjustments did not appear to actually do anything, so I can't really say that it works. With that said, if you're looking for the shape and feel of the boom slang, you can still use it on a modern gaming rig. I just wouldn't recommend it because whether you like it or not, this is what peak performance looks like now. And we're gonna have a handful of excellent modern gaming mice at various price points in the video description that are not this. If what you really care about is the nostalgia though, there was actually a sort of reissue or update Back in 2007, with the Boomslang Collector's Edition, it had an 1800 DPI 3G infrared sensor and 1000 Hz pulling rate. Unfortunately, it was limited to just 10,000 units, so you might have a hard time getting your hands on one. We did find two on eBay, but they ranged from 169 US dollars, nice, to 500 US dollars, which is not nice by any measure. Unlike this segue to our sponsor. Mexico! Love playing with your Oculus Quest 2, but hate dealing with keeping your headset charged and stored nicely? Nexigo's new S20 charging dock is for you. It's an all-in-one charging and storage system that comes with a magnetic USB-C connector. That means all you have to do is set your headset down and it charges automatically. It also comes with rechargeable batteries and custom battery covers for wireless charging to keep your controllers fully charged and ready to play. Got the Elite strap with battery? Don't worry, it comes with an extra support brace and cable to keep that charged too. So take your VR setup to the next level and get your Nexigo S20 charging dock using the link down below. If you guys liked this video, make sure to check out our review of the G502 Hero from Logitech in one of our recent editions of Why the Flipping Hell is Everyone Buying This? 